Okay, hello. Uh, nice to see you, nice to be here. Uh, my name is Adam Warski. I come from Warsaw, Poland, and work, I work for Software Mill, which is a really great software house. And uh, this will be a quick quickie about ElasticMQ, SQS, and a bit about how ElasticMQ is implemented. Uh, so, uh, Scala, Akka, and Spray. Uh, so first, maybe a quick introduction or a reminder what actually Amazon SQS is. Uh, so Amazon SQS is uh, one of Amazon's offerings. It is a message queue as a service. Uh, so it offers some basic uh, message queue-like operations through a REST interface. So you can uh, send a message uh, to the queue, so it is put on the queue and uh, other uh, components can, la can later receive the message. So you can receive the message as well and delete it. And uh, uh, Amazon SQS offers at least once delivery. So when you send a message, you can be sure that you will receive it uh, at least once, but you can re receive it multiple times uh, due to either your uh, server dying or the Amazon SQS server dying. Um, so the way uh, receiving works is that when you uh, do a receive, the message is blocked from subsequent receives uh, for some specified period of time. Uh, that period of time is called the visibility timeout. So let's say it's 10 seconds, right? So you call a receive, the message is blocked, and it won't be visible for subsequent receives until these 10 seconds. So if you delete the message, then it's gone. If you don't delete it, it will be received again. And that's how you can implement uh, fault tolerance uh, inside, uh, in, in, inside your application. Um, OK, so let's say you have an application which uses Amazon SQS. Right, so how do you test uh, that the integration, that uh, how you use Amazon SQS is uh, actually correct? So you cannot test it, which is uh, usually a bad idea. So the other solution uh, is to simply use the real SQS uh, implementation, right? But that has some uh, drawbacks. Uh, for example, uh, to run the test, you need then an internet connection, which uh, is not always available, and you can get failing tests just because in the internet is down. Uh, secondly, if you have several developers working uh, on uh, the same project and they try to run the test concurrently, the test may get in a weird state if they share the same, the, the same real queue on Amazon SQS. Right? And uh, finally, th the tests can be uh, a bit slower uh, because creating queues, deleting queues over the network, uh, which is typically not inside the Amazon network, uh, can, be, can, uh, can be slow. So there's, of course, a third so solution. And the solution is to use a local uh, Amazon SQS server. And ElasticMQ uh, does precisely that. It is a local SQS implementation. And, uh, well, yeah, let's see how you can use it. Um, <coughs> yeah, so, uh, as I said, ElasticMQ implements... Uh, it's not really a full implementation of SQS. It only implements the relevant subset, so the message-related the, the message operations, like send, receive, delete, and so on. It doesn't implement the permissions part. Uh, it is uh, an in-memory queue, uh, and thanks to that also, it is very lightweight. It is very easy to start it, to stop it. You can start it multiple times during the tests, and the performance overhead will be very small. Uh, so how can you use it? Uh, in the simplest form, you just download the jar, uh, which, is an which is an executable jar, and you run it. And that will start a, a REST server uh, on the default port, uh, uh, which you can then use uh, from any uh, Amazon client. Uh, so as we can see here, it started in one and a half seconds, right? And probably most of that is due to the JVM uh, starting up. Uh, so to use ElasticMQ, uh, you need any uh, SQS client. There's a lot of clients uh, for various languages. Uh, some of them are official Amazon clients, some of them are uh, unofficial. Uh, here we can see the Java client, um, the Amazon Java SDK. So it has a bunch of classes re uh, f with which you can uh, talk to SQS. Uh, for example, we have the Amazon SQS client, right? So we instantiate that. We can pass it any, we can pass in any credentials because the, credential, uh, the credentials are not checked. We set the endpoint to our uh, server, right, to the ElasticMQ server, and then we can use SQS uh, as always, right? So the only difference here is that we set the endpoint to our local server instead of using the real implementation. Um, you can also uh, use ElasticMQ in an embedded fashion, so it uh, runs on any JVM 
language. Uh, there's a builder with which you can select the port, uh, the interface, start the server, and yeah, just use it in the test and, and, and then stop it. So that's all for the uh, SQS part, of course. Thank you very much. Um, however, that's, of course, not the end of, of the talk. And what I really wanted to show you is uh, what's under the hood of, of ElasticMQ and uh, how is it implemented on a very high level. So hopefully I can get you interested in some of the technologies. Uh, with, uh, it's not going to be a comprehensive guide to any of these, so just uh, to show uh, how you can build um, such, uh, such servers. So the main three technologies that I use here are Scala, Ack, and Spray. Scala is used as, as the main language, Akka is used as the concurrency model, and Spray for the REST APIs. So they kind of uh, come uh, in one. Akka is part of Scala, Spray is part of Akka right now. And uh, <coughs> you can uh, combine these three uh, to build reactive applications. Reactive applications means that uh, in, uh, well, at least in Elastic MQ, there is not a single blocking operation. Everything is asynchronous and only reacts to events coming from the outside, so you never wait on, on anything. So uh, why uh, would you go with asynchronous in the first place? Well, firstly because it's trendy, right? So everybody wants to build re reactive apps. But there's also, in fact, a, a better reason for that. And uh, um, like the normal op operations, uh, sending the and deleting messages, that would work pretty well with a traditional synchrono synchronous REST server as well. However, there's one feature which is called long polling, um, which is a kind of a compromise between push and pull messaging. Um, so when you receive, when you want to receive a message from uh, SQS, and uh, there are no messages. Uh, Without the long polling, you will just get an, back an empty list. So uh, if you want to get messages as fast as possible, you will query, um, you will query SQS continuously, and uh, this, will re this will result in active polling. So that's quite a waste of network re resources and CPU and so on. Uh, so what you can do instead, you can use long polling. So you can say, uh, I want to receive a messages with a timeout of 20 seconds, and if there are no messages in the queue, at the time uh, when you do the call, the, re the request will wait for up to 20 seconds, and if any messages come, you will get them, right? And uh, that actually would be not so easy to implement in a traditional synchronous fashion. So to implement that, you would need some uh, logs, uh, synchronizations, semaphores, and so on. And well, that can get messy easily. So uh, that's where uh, the asynchronous implementation r really helps to make it easy. Okay, so uh, to show you exactly what I mean by easy, let's take a look at uh, receive message uh, call. Uh, so as I said, uh, uh, ElasticMQ uses a Spray at the top level for the REST APIs. And uh, Spray, uh, in Spray, when you create a spray, an application with, spr with uh, Spray, you need, you need to define routes. So um, Let's say a request comes into Spray, right? And Spray constructs a request context object, and that object is immutable, and it captures all of the details about the request. So it's the path, the parameters, the request method, so like get, post, and so on. And, and it passes uh, this object to the routes. And now each route can either accept a request and execute the, uh, root uh, the route specific logic, or it can be rejected. So now if we have multiple routes, we can combine them with the tilde operator, like here. So we have the send message route and the receive message route, create queue route combined with the tilde operator. And the way the tilde operator works is that if the first uh, route accepts uh, the request, then uh, that's all that is uh, there, right? Because the request is already handled. If it rejects the request, then the second route is tried and so on, right? So at the top level, ElasticMQ is just a series of routes concatenated with the tilde operator. And when a, request come in, when a request comes in, they are tried one by one. And to actually start a REST server, all we need to do is create a new simple routing app object, specify the interface, the port, pass in the routes, and that's it. Right? The server starts, starts listening. OK, so now uh, let's go inside one of these routes. Each route is composed of a series of directives. 
and a directive is, kind of, is like a filter on the request. So for, the, for example, the simplest kind of directive is path. So it checks if the request uh, path matches uh, what is in the directive. And there are also directives for parameters, uh, uh, request uh, types like postget and so on. Uh, so here we see a series of directives. You can nest directives uh, to like nested and do nested f filtering. So the first directive is actually a, a, a custom directive. Mm, it is very easy to write your own directives and hence create kind of DSLs for specifying uh, REST handlers. So the first directive is an action one. And what it expands to, like if, if you would look in the code, it is a path, an empty path, and an action parameter. And the parameter must have a value of a receive message. If uh, the value of the parameter is, is uh, if, the, if the value of the action parameter is receive message, and the path is empty, then <coughs> this request will go forward. So the second di directive, which, uh, which is uh, two parameters, visibility timeout and wait time seconds. So they are well, ty they are well typed. Mm, the first one uh, will be an option of int, and the second one will be an option of long. Right? So for the param directive, we have to provide a closure, which takes the parameters with the correct types. And that's another nice feature of Spray, that all the parameters are well typed, as we specify in the param directive. And finally, we have the uh, the logic that should be executed when the request is uh, when the request matches all of our directives. So let's go inside and see what that logic is. So when we uh, actually want to receive, so now we know that uh, our call has been a receive message. So what we do is we create a request, uh, an object receive messages, which describes our request, and we send it to a queue actor. So each queue in ElasticMQ is represented as an actor. So we send that to the actor, and uh, we use the ask pattern, so which is the question mark over here, uh, to get a future, uh, to get a, re a result in the future, right? So we ask the actor to uh, get us uh, some messages. So we send the actor a receive messages actor message, right? And what we get back is a future of list of messages. Now, we map that future, and so we say, eventually, when you get the list of messages, respond with an XML containing these messages, right? And in this, uh, in this future handler, we actually use the context, uh, we, we complete the context and actually send the response. So what is important here is that when the request is first handled, nothing happens with the request context. It's not, there's no response, right? Because the response is only done in the future, which, will be, which can be completed like in 10, 20 seconds. So the request is kind of dropped, right? It will only be used once we get a response from the queue actor. Um, okay, so let's go inside the queue actor. Uh, so inside, inside the queue actor, it is a normal actor, and when it uh, gets a receive messages request, it checks if there are any messages in its internal message queue, right? If there are, it sends back the results. So we can use the sender to send back the results, and the, when we send something to the sender, this will actually complete the future, right? So sending something to the sender completes the future, and when the future is completed, that in turn will uh, send a response uh, back to the uh, back, back to the client. If there are no messages, we put uh, the sender aside into a waiting, uh, waiting futures queue, so it's the awaiting uh, queue here, right? And if any messages come in, we just take one actor, one sender from, from that queue and complete it, right? So again, nothing blocking here. We also schedule a timeout in 20 seconds so that, uh, uh, so that if there are no messages in 20 seconds, uh, we, we send back an empty response. And the last thing I wanted to talk about is data flow. Uh, data flow lets you write asynchronous code as if, it's, if, as if it was synchronous. So it is very useful if you have a lot of, feature, a lot of features, especially in conditionals. There's also, so uh, data flow is an ACA module, mo module. There's also an alternative project called Scala Async which uses macros instead of continuations. So uh, the uh, the features are more or less the same. Uh, Scala Async is a bit newer it's a, 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 and younger, but it has better error reporting. But the functionality is, is, is the same. So how Dataflow works is uh, 
for example, when we, when we look at that code, it, it looks like normal uh, synchronous code, but actually it will be turned into a future. It, everything will be run asynchronously, and there will be no blocking operations. So the main part here is uh, we ask, again, an actor. So we ask the queue manager to look up a queue, right? And we get back a future of queue. And now we can call an apply on that, and that will actually, the apply turns a future of T to a T. So it looks like a blocking operation which unwraps the future, right? Uh, but actually it will be turned by the flow, which is uh, like the magic here, uh, it will be turned by the flow into an asynchronous map call. Right, so we, we can uh, get the queue fr from the future and uh, yeah, do something with it. So here we either, requeue, we either return the queue or we, uh, do an, we uh, get another future to, uh, to, to create the queue and then we unwrap that feature again. Okay? So uh, this looks like synchronous code by thanks to flow and apply, the code will be turned into an asynchronous version uh, with, without any blocking operations. Okay? So a couple of links. And uh, to the, uh, for the end, uh, I also have another talk about uh, module systems, uh, both a bit on the, pre on the theor theoretical side, so uh, what can you expect from a module system to have, and some practical s solutions, um, very Pax and Ceylon. It will be today in this room, uh, 10 to 6. And uh, that's all for the quickie. Uh, I also encourage you to look at CodeBrag. It's a code review tool we are developing. Uh, we are also starting an uh, I'm proud of my code movement. Uh, so if you like the, uh, if you like uh, this, uh, 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 if, if you like, you can come and get a sticker. Um, I also, we also have a special uh, link for DevOx, codebrack.com slash DevOx, where you can get an early version uh, preview uh, and download it and try it for yourself. Uh, so if you have any questions, please grab me either during lunch or now. If you would like a sticker, uh, please do it as well. Okay, thank you very much.